I'm going to just explain a little about what computer programming is. To give you an example, you might think of robots um, in a factory. So what could you instruct the robots to do? You might say, robot, repeat this task five times. Robot, um, if the car is red, then do this to it. Robot, um, if a blue car comes through, remember and keep a count of them. Robot, if a pink car comes through, then just tell me. Now these, in fact, are the basic elements of all computer programming, this repetition, these if this, then that, show me this. Essentially, what I want to talk about is how to take what is at the heart a very simple thing and maybe make it a little more attractive. So first, let's look at the ways that programmers have already tried to make programming easier to understand. So maybe we better actually show a bit of code. Many of you aren't programmers. This won't mean a lot to you. And in fact, to those of you that are programmers, um, it's pretty messy looking code. Now, what I mean by that is that one of the first things that coders have done um, to make things more readable and easier to develop, they learned from authors. They learned it from the people who write books. And very early on, authors and essay writers and so forth learned that if you took this and you turned it into this, things became much easier to write and much easier to read as well. And early on, computer programmers uh, realized that. And so they turned this code into this code. So it's a little like the paragraphs, the sentences, the formatting, the headings. Now, this may still not mean very much to you, but to me, I can see much more clearly where those sort of robot instructions are, the if this, then that, the repeat this, the show me this, thanks to this indenting and the way the code has been formatted. Now, another way in which programmers have tried to make it a little more enjoyable to program is something I do myself. It's not so much whistle while I work, but listening while I work. Listening to music while coding, it's a very, very common thing. And in fact, research has shown that some programmers show an increase in efficiency actually listening to music. Um, and in fact, uh, you can see me at times uh, when I'm programming kind of too much coffee and listening to the music and bobbing my head with the music, getting very excitable, but unfortunately the QWERTY keyboard and the mouse and so forth aren't very good dance partners, or even a touch screen for that matter. And this soundtracking of tasks, whether they're recreational, whether they're a job, it's becoming more and more common that people are soundtracking their lives, you know, whether it's traveling, whether we're exercising, whether we're chilling out on our own together, or even making out, apparently. This soundtracking of our lives is a far more common occurrence nowadays. And one of the reasons for this is the, this feeling of flow. I'm sure many of you are familiar with that now. It's this state of mind where you uh, become so immersed in your task or what you're doing that the, the passage of time seems to change. You become much more productive. Everything um, is, is much more pleasant to do. And programmers do seek out this state of flow. Now, there is another link between programming and music that many programmers probably aren't aware of. If you look at our code again, and to the side there, there's a representation of a pop song. That pop song is actually Like a Prayer uh, by Madonna, a late 80s hit. And you can kind of see the structure in there of the verses, the choruses, the middle eight. Even not fully understanding musical structure and that graphical encoding, and not fully understanding um, programming code, I think we can kind of see there is a relationship there, this, the, this structure relationship. And in fact, research has shown that if you take code and you transform it into music using computers, it enables programmers to find errors more quickly in many cases. So we have this link now between music and code. We have my desire to, um, I don't know, almost dance with the computer, bopping my head. And, and these sorts of things have led us in Plymouth University's Interdisciplinary Center for Computer Music Research to develop a programming language called MIMED, M-I-E-D. It stands for Musically Backed Input Movements for Expressive Development. And the basic idea is, it's, it's more for teaching programming, you kind of use gestures, almost dance, with the computer, and the computer plays you music as you program it to tell you how your program's going. So let me show you an example of that. It's a little like the, the commas and uh, the paragraphs that you see in, in normal writing or the indenting that you saw in the code, but we're using music for this. Okay. So this is the beat, so Mimed is telling me Start programming me. Give me instructions. So I'm going to give it a list of instructions. 
And the sign language that we use for mimed is a well-known um, kind of pervasive form of sign language called American Sign Language. Now this is the sign for repeat. And you can hear now there's a bass line playing. So in other words, what's happening now, it's saying, OK, everything that happens now, I'm going to repeat these instructions that you give me. And I'm going to say, and the bass line's gone to three bass notes now. And so that's saying, right, every instruction you give me now, I'm going to repeat three times. This is all the basic language of computers. And the instruction is show. This is American Sign Language for show. And what I'm going to ask to show is... And then another show command. So you can hear it's still making the show sound. And I will go for... And then cut. So that will cut the whole... So now the program has all the instructions. Um, now, uh, we, we don't have integrated here today the actual intelligence of the program, so I'm going to be a little bit like one of those cookery programs and show you one I prepared earlier. <laughs> You'll notice there's a reason for that, which I'll actually explain in a moment. You'll notice as well we used a particular type of music, this urban dance music. In fact, we've also looked at electronic dance music and... Um, what we feel urban dance music maybe is a better way for communicating with the teenagers and the young people who we want to encourage to program, to interact in this way with a computer. Now, here is some of the sign language that we use that you're going to see more of. This is what the program would have done. So you can see the whole language is video-based. It's meant to be very intuitive for use. So we came up against, very quickly, uh, a frustration with this. The essential innovation in MIMED is the idea of linking programming, linking coding, and the structure of music and the movement. This is really the innovation, a new way of thinking about interacting when you're programming and teaching the programming of computers. However, um, visual recognition, obviously, is a key part of this, to recognize the gestures, um, the uh, generation of the music by the computer. Um, the, there are a number of elements which are well-researched, are not particularly innovative in themselves. There's systems to do it. However, they can take a while to implement. So we were in a position where we were very keen to, to work on um, some of the key elements of MIMED, but we were, we were stuck working on this kind of technical development. And um, we wondered, was there a way we could speed it up? Could we speed up the development? And we thought about the history of computing. And we looked back into the history of, um, of the very first computers, and in fact, what just preceded them. Computer used to mean a person, a person who computes. And in the Manhattan Project, the American Nuclear Bomb Project, even though they had some very simple electronic computers, um, there were still human computers, rooms of people who would take data and they would combine it and do calculations and then combine the results and that would be the results of the computation. We wondered, could we use a human computer of some sort? Now obviously the human computers here were mathemat mathematicians, expert mathematicians. Um, they um, were very accurate with their calculations. We needed uh, the sort of machine that could respond to gestures in a synchronized way, that could work with music and, of course, dancers. Dancers are human beings who are trained in responding and working with gestures, in working in synchronization with music, in working with choreography. And we recruited four dancers and a musician, um, and we taught them the mimed language in its current state of development. And we were able to work on a large number of issues that otherwise would have had to wait. Some of the core innovations, what, what are the uh, signs that we should be using from sign language? What are the ways in which the music should trigger the different elements of the urban genre and the ways in which the programming should trigger all those elements? Um, how simple is mime to, to um, learn for children, for teenagers? A lot of these things could be worked on by having this human computer made up of, in the end, it was three dancers, a musician, and then a dancer who was programming them. Now, we realized that we had, in fact, straddled by accident 
the, um, the line between music and performance and researching programming. And what I'd actually like to do today is introduce you to our computer. So um, could I please present the computer, which is uh, Olivia is our programmer, and the computer is Toby, Max, and Sam, and Federico, the musician, as well. OK. So what's going to happen now is Olivia is going to uh, give you a demonstration of how we can program this human computer. Um, and then I'll step in again when they've been programmed to explain a little more. OK, Olivia, go for it. Now that they are programmed, right? So now, so now what's going to happen is Livy's going to trigger the program. They, she will then do some more moves because um, that some of the commands that they were given was to receive data from her about how they're going to move. She will do the moves in a contemporary dance style, and our computer will respond in its own unique way to those moves. OK, go for it.
So there you have our uh, computer. And as I say, using this, uh, we've been able to work on many of the elements of mind we wouldn't have been able to work on at such an early stage. And um, the, uh, the thing I'd like to say is that, that when I was um, you know, on my own programming in my bedroom, I, I, I didn't feel lonely when I was learning this program because I was discovering the, the power and immersion of computers and just what could be done with these uh, wonderful machines. But I, I think, you know, we can take this further, we can take this to more people by creating new ways of interacting with computers through movement and through music. And um, I'd also like to see, we've known for a number of years that uh, you can use computers to create music and performances, but maybe we should start thinking about how we can use music and performance to research computer programming. Thank you.